In this video I will explain three useful techniques to avoid overlearning, so you don't reduce your test scores because of this issue. What is overlearning? You may know the feeling of being completely absorbed as you learn an interesting topic. This normally happens when you study a subject for the very first time and try to get an understanding and overview of this interesting and new topic. Overlearning happens after this moment and when you have already collected all the facts and developed an understanding. During this stage you just want to keep up the level of memorization. As you will not get new input going forward, you start to get bored. You are stuck in repeating the same stuff over and over. Maybe you repeat the topic for repetition's sake and to convince yourself that you've studied enough. You realize how you get distracted easily and lose concentration. Overlearning is a common issue and does often result in lower test scores. Additionally, if you overlearn and end up failing, you may want to learn even more next time, which will only worsen the problem and lead to demotivation. Trying harder is not always the right recipe. When to write a test. The ideal time to write a test is when you have an overview about the scope of the test and memorized all the facts belonging to that scope. This is when you are still interested in the subject, because it's fresh in your memory and you are happy to have finally prepared yourself properly. If you achieve this goal right before the test, you will get a good assessment. What if your test is still far out and you've already memorized each of the concepts? What do you do now? Perform more repetition? Learn another subject? Methods against overlearning Apart from knowing yourself and watching out for the emotional signs of overlearning, you could also use a bit of help from your favorite flashcard tool. A good tool will help you to manage your learning schedule and determine what content you must learn. The tool will tell you if you are behind schedule or ahead of it and risk therefore overlearning. In the following I will explain three instruments which will help you to manage overlearning. The first is the awareness of how much time you need to prepare and learn a subject. Second one is spaced repetition. And the third one is learning only what you don't know. Determining the time you will need to learn and prepare. Analytics and statistics are a big help here. Of course you have a feeling for how long it takes to get a grip on your subject. But do you know for sure? You will usually only know after the fact. Collecting statistical data after each flashcard learning session can help you to anticipate how many days or how many repetitions you need to learn a similar topic in the future. Of course, this measurement varies from person to person and also depends on the complexity of the subject and how you write your flashcards. If you use a tool like PAUG to prepare your tests, the tool will output after a few learnings your personal lead time to prepare a topic to perfection. This can be the days you need to start in advance or the number of repetitions you need to master a subject. Soon you will know these figures for all kind of learning situations. This information is useful to determine the time you need to learn a subject properly without over preparing. How does spaced repetition help? Spaced repetition will space the waiting time between repetitions of flashcard, increasing the spacing gradually on higher levels. The purpose of spaced repetition is to repeat the cards right before you would forget it. This way the brain must make some effort to remember the right answer, so you will never get bored repeating flashcards using spaced repetition. Only flashcards, which are due for repetition, means you are close to forgetting the answer, will be asked. Limits of the system are more in practical nature. While experts all agree on spaced repetition being the superior method in memorization of facts with the least amount of repetitions, the lead time can be quite stretched. Because of the spaces between the repetitions, you may have to start learning 30 days in advance and follow the proposed repetitions each day. This is perfectly fine if you have enough time and discipline. However, if you only have three days to prepare, you may need a shortcut. Only learn what you don't know. 
if you're not using automated spacing with spaced repetition, instead using a classic flashcard system with five or six boxes, you can substantially speed up the process and drill your cars on the highest level. Many students are not in full control of their time management due to outside stress factors such as having a lot of tests within short notice and a very limited amount of time to prepare. This is also a common selection method for students used by teachers. Restrict available time to prepare on purpose. In this case, a classic flashcard method is the right approach to get the job done quickly. However, in this case, overlearning is an inherited risk. Therefore, the flashcard tool must provide the option to repeat the lower levels only. This way, you avoid repeating the cards you already know perfectly, those on level 4 and 5. So you will not be bored and overlearn. Plus, this method is more efficient, because there tends to be a smaller amount of cards in lower levels. Drilling those up is easy if you can aggressively focus on them. Overlearning is somewhat unfair for many students because it has nothing to do with your true potential and instead depends on choosing the right learning strategy. Visit pauker.ch to try out a flashcard tool which does support the method described.